All right, guys, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here, and today we have Intel Granite Rapids CPUs could be 1.7 times bigger than the Sapphire Rapids. AMD admits to undershipping CPUs and GPUs. The first AMD Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs are coming very soon. Intel drops the price of ARC A750 GPU, and a new driver gets the performance improvement, so that's good. AMD 6 A620 motherboards lack PCIe Gen 5 support, but they can overclock the RAM. And lastly, we have the NVIDIA PG137, which refers to the Titan ADA. It's probably coming real soon, but don't know when. Alright, so firstly, we have the SkyJuice user in Twitter uh, shared this information here, and that's the Granite's Rapid Xeon 9000 that he mentioned is pretty huge. And if you look into the picture here, well, it's not lying it's quite big it's very big like that's the lga 4677 which is the sapphire rapids and for the well the granite rapids we're looking at something that is 1.7 times the pins or the areas i should say because if you look into the dimension here that's the calculation by the sky jesus uh, user here and we're looking at 105 into 70.5 millimeter square which is a massive like quite massive i have to say <laughs> like again it says 1.7 times the area so boy it, i mean hopefully the granite rapid is gonna be good because it's taking a lot of size here you know <laughs> and yeah that's that's huge that's real huge of a cpu that we'll be seeing when it really launches you know next up we have amd that has admitted to under shipping cpus and gpus here and if you look into this uh interview here uh well lisa su amd ceo replied with this statement we do believe the first quarter is the bottom of our pc market for our pc business and we'll see some growth in the second quarter and then seasonally higher second half in terms of the undershipment i mean i think we're we undershipped in q3 we undershipped in q4 so they are admitting that they did undership in q3 and q4 of 2022 so that, that's probably the reason why they never really got sold that much, and that's really true. The uh, the stock was pretty low for AMD, so that even the selling the price uh, and you know, the CPUs and the GPUs they didn't really get that much sales. So that kind of makes sense. They did undership, but I don't know why. She carries on with this statement here. We will undership to a lesser extent in Q1. So I think you can infer that from our guidance, single digit down. And then we'll back we'll be back to more normal environment. Now, just as a reminder, though, the first half is not usually a the first half is usually a seasonally weak client time, anyways. So basically, we'll be seeing the same trend here, I believe, because as she mentions that it's gonna be you know weak for the client for the first half. So we'll still be seeing low shipping from the AMD side here in terms of CPU and GPUs and boy they're still very expensive right now so I hope they're gonna go down in Q2 in terms of pricing and also will increase the shipment in, and that will be the solve I guess because they really need to get the sales you know so only time will tell if the shipment will be higher or as usual and next up we have Ryzen 7000 processor got well launched or you could say announced not launch basically the launch is february 28 i should say that's the date that we're getting and well they have shared the information the 7950x 3d which is the top of the line right now and also which comes for with the same pricing of the 7950x which is 699 so that's kind of weird kind of pricing maybe this guy here 7950x is going to X3D is going to be performing well in terms of gaming and in terms of, well, other productivity. But I really don't know what's going to happen with 7950X because, again, the benchmark will tell you why they priced it same. Because 7950X should still has a value or it should, like, 7950 cannot really surpass that, is it? Like, why are they pricing the same? You know, it's kind of confusing here. But I think 7950X3D might work in some applications but for others you still need to go for the 7950x i guess but yeah this is, this is a 16 core 32 threads processor here and the boost clock we're looking at 5.7 the well the lower clock is 4.2 gigahertz 144 megabytes of l3 cache which is 
explanatory because it's a uh, X3D, so no doubt about that. And uh, the rate of TDP is 120 watts. We also got the 7900X3D coming at 599 a $50 premium compared to the 7900X, and it's coming at 5.6 uh, boosted, and uh, normal is 4.4 kHz, 140 megabytes, which is still a lot of L3 cache and 120 watts TDP remaining the same TDP. And the uh, last one, which is the Ryzen 7, uh, probably not the least because I believe they're going to be uh, sending the Ryzen 5 7600X3D. So hopefully that's going to come but later. But right now we have the 7800X3D for the 449, which is still a $50 premium compared to the 78, or I should say the 7700X. 8 Chlor 16 threads, 5 gigahertz boost clock and normal is 4.2, 104 megabytes, quite a, a lot still, but it still goes down to 104 megabytes of L3 cache and 120 watts CDP remaining. So these CPUs are looking very appealing and of course for the gaming it's gonna be great. Next up we have computer base brought in this and well according to their sources here, and I should, shouldn't say sources, they're basically Intel just Analysis, this or nobody really knows because it's not really a big deal but if you look into it intel arc a750 now have a new pricing of 249 usds yes they have cut down the pricing here which is nice but they also uh, improved performance because as you can see 43 percent performance gains on dx9 games as you already know the uh, intel arc gpus suffer a lot in DX9 titles here, and if you look into it, well, th there are some gains here, but let me let me look into the per percentile because that's much easier. So if you look into the blue graph here, this is the newer uh, driver that we're looking at, and well, when launched, they're comparing um, around 10% gain in Guild Wars 2. Same goes for the For the King. Team Fortress got 19%. Left 4 Dead got 20%. Starcraft 2, 31%. Rift, 34%. Payday 2, League of Legends, they're gaining higher and higher. And the maximum one we're looking at is the CSGO, which is probably the most, like, the suffered in terms of, you know, like, that's why we're seeing the most in CSGO, 77% uh, increase in performance because they suffered the most in CSGO. So, yeah, CSGO is looking very good now for Intel Arc A750, which is nice. And this is the new driver that is performing this improvement. So, that's pretty good. And if you look into the 99th percentile, basically the 1 person low, uh, they also got improved by a big margin, but not huge for the Guild Wars, only 2%. Maybe that, that wasn't really the problem for that game. But as I said, in CSGO, 114% gain in the 1 percentile. So that kind of makes sense why CSGO was not optimal for Intel Arc GPUs. But now they are because they improved it. So big up to the, uh, dev or the driver developers from intel or software the engineers there they did real good so yeah csgo is fixed and for the csgo players i guess you can now play with an intel arc gpu next up we have chili dog sharing this and that is the amd's a620 chipset and if you look into it well they do have some well underperformance here because well if you look into it they don't have support for the gen 5 a620 it's only going to support up to 28 lanes of gen 4 the chipset PCIe is also going to be 8 lanes of Gen 3, not Gen 4. The uplink, again, X4 Gen 3, not Gen 4. And, well, basically, uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, you have only two uh, ports, so it kind of makes sense. USB 3.2 Gen 1 will have two, and USB 2.0 is going to have the six, which is the same. No crossfire support and no CPU overclocking. But they do have RAM overclocking, which is kind of neat because if you're going for budget and when when you're going for budget, you don't really care about overclocking that much anyway. And also the Gen 5 uh, is not really important in budget friendly builds. But RAM overclocking, that's kind of appealing because, you know, you can just overclock the RAMs and gain a lot of performance from even from that single uh, tweaking. So I think that's kind of neat. They're, they're using... They're giving the support for the RAM overclocking, so that's nice. That's really nice. And lastly, we have NVIDIA Titan RTX getting spotted here. And this is an article from WCCF Tech here. And well, they're just confirming that 48 gigs of G6X memory will be shipped with uh, 
the RTX 40 uh, 90 Ti or maybe the Ada or I should say the Ada uh, i Titan RTX will have the 48 gigs of G6X memory. Well, this is the well. This is what appeared here. If you look into it, this is the well. If you're looking at into it, uh, 48 gigs. That's what I say. G6. I don't. I don't think that they mentioned G6X, but I guess X slash D means X. I guess I don't know why they mentioned that. But yeah. Yeah, this is the PG one thirty seven board we're looking at, as you, you can, as you can see right here, and forty eight gigs of G six X memory. So that's kind of strange. And this is probably the picture that was leaked beforehand, uh, the big cooler design. That's probably the the biggest GPU in decade we've seen. So, or I should say the fattest, not the biggest, the fattest GPU. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is the this, these are the pictures that we've seen already in the previously. Now, if you look into the specs here, an NVIDIA Titan, maybe the Titan, Ada Titan, who knows, like, what's going to be the naming scheme, uh, or maybe just Titan, who cares, really. So it's going to be 80, 102 uh, skew here, or 102, 400 skew here, maybe, that's what the question marking. Uh, the variant PCV is, if we still don't know that, the SM count is quite big, 1800, 18,176 which is 144 SM count, basically. So it's a huge count. Again, 48 gigs of 384 bit memory. So blazing fast and 24 GBPS of memory clock. TVP is rated as 800, that's the estimated value. And there will be two 16 pins, or I should say those 12 WPH or whatever you say, that's really hard to spell. But yeah, that's a connector they're gonna be using. Uh, with the pictures they were leaked beforehand so that's why we can tell there's gonna be two of them and it kind of makes sense because it's a titan and the surprising thing is that RTX 4090 Ti will also have the same SM units as you can see but the memory bus is gonna be lower I mean not the bus the memory size is gonna be lower the bus remains same and less TVP so I'm thinking titan and 4090 Ti is gonna be on par in most cases, in terms of performance, but we'll see. But the question is, will they be even launched? That's a real deal that we should ask ourselves. Will they be launched or no? But I guess we have to wait and see because this card is literally getting shipped. But when, we don't know, or maybe, maybe not, because they could be just hoax, you know? But this card still exists, and it did it is big it does exist and it is huge all right that is it for today what do you think about the pricing for the 7000 x 3d cpus here do you think they're you know priced well enough that depends on the consumers obviously and also do you think that titan rtx will ever come to the market because we already know that it was mentioned cancelled but now we're seeing it shipping i guess when time passes things change but yeah We'll see when it really launches. Until then, have a good day. And of course, like, share, and subscribe.